having reflected with you already on the Acts of the Apostles, the first reading from the Friday of the second week of Easter, I'd like to reflect with you now upon the Gospel, which is taken from the sixth chapter of St. John. Jesus went across the sea. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about five thousand in number. And Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the readings that we have in the gospel this week follow up on the Easter season. Easter, of course, was a time for baptism. People were received into the church at the Easter vigil. They would receive baptism, confirmation, and, of course, the Holy Eucharist. In Jesus' discourse with Nicodemus earlier this week, we heard lots and lots about the Spirit. In baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. We are made temples of the Holy Spirit. In confirmation, we are sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and strengthened to be witnesses to our faith. So it's natural that the church would talk a little bit about the Spirit, baptism, confirmation. But now the readings begin to move in this mystagogical period toward the Eucharist. Our first communicants at the parish were to have made their first Holy Communion uh, last Sunday, this coming Sunday, and the following Sunday. It's sad that we can't yet have them share in the Eucharistic feast with us, but that day will come soon enough. The sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel uh, denotes the bread of life discourses. Jesus reveals himself not only to be the new Moses, but to be greater than Moses. Just as in St. Matthew's Gospel in the fifth chapter, when Jesus begins a Sermon on the Mount, he went up a mountain, sat down, and began to teach. He gave the Beatitudes, he gave the antitheses, you have heard it said to you, but I say to you. Jesus established himself as the teacher par excellence, one who, like Moses, went up the mountain, uh, like Moses sat down to teach, but he gave a new teaching, a teaching greater than that of Moses. Moses went up the mountain, uh, but he did not see God's face. God told him his name. God gave him the gift of the law. Jesus was God. He who is with the Father and who came down from heaven has seen the Father. And thus he can hand on to us what he has seen. He can hand on the words of life to us. He can hand on to us the works of God. Jesus knows who his Father is. And he can convey that love to each and every one of us. Jesus not only gives people the law, he is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. Moses gave the people manna in the desert, the bread come down from heaven, but it was bread. In the Holy Eucharist, Jesus gives us his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Here today, we have just the first chap the first uh, 15 verses of the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. And Jesus performs the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, a miracle that is also found in all the synoptic gospels. In this story, Jesus sees the vast crowds. He knows their hunger. 
And today people, again, are hungering for the Eucharist, especially during this time of panic, pandemic. I guess it's both. Uh, and, and so Jesus has come with his disciples. The feast of Passover is drawing near. Jesus knows that he will not only lead the people as Moses did into freedom, but Moses' Passover was one type. Jesus leads us in a new Passover from death to life. And the people are hungry. And Philip asks, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? Jesus knows who he is. He is the son of the eternal father. He is God. He knows what he's going to do. He's going to multiply loaves and fishes. But he also knows that he wants to draw out the best from his people. And when there's such a vast crowd and Philip is saying, it's going to take us 200 days wages just to feed this crowd, a little boy comes up with what he has, five loaves and two fish. Now, some people have misinterpreted this parable to say, well, Jesus didn't actually multiply loaves and fishes. He just caused everybody to share. No, Jesus did, in fact, multiply the loaves and fishes. But the little boy is generous. He has five loaves and two fish. St. Augustine says the five loaves represent the Pentateuch, the five books of the old law. And the two fish, Augustine says, this represents the divinity and humanity of Jesus. So you have the old covenant and the new covenant. But the little boy comes and he offers what little he has. But Jesus takes what little he has and what's given with generosity and love, and he multiplies it. That can happen also with our prayers. We might say, Lord, this is a poor, pathetic prayer, This, but this is all I have to offer. And so I offer it to you with all the love in my heart. And I know that you can make something beautiful for your father with this prayer. So I give to you and I give generously. And we will see the miracles that the Lord will perform. In this case, the little boy gave his five loaves and two fish, and they fed 5,000 men. And everyone who wanted to eat had enough to eat. They were all satisfied, and there were still more left over. Twelve wicker baskets full, representative of the 12 tribes of Israel. Nothing went to waste. We see the Eucharistic language because Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, Eucharisteias is the, is the verb that's used there in Greek and distributed them to all who were reclining. Indeed, Jesus comes to give us more, though, than earthly bread. He wants to give us himself. The people saw the great sign just as they had seen the sign at the wedding feast of Cana and seen signs when he had overturned the money changers' tables in the temple. Jesus was performing signs. People were coming to believe in him. In this case, they, want, they saw him as the prophet, the long-expected prophet. This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. And Jesus knew that they were only seeing things in earthly terms. They wanted to make him king. They wanted him to liberate them from their Roman oppressors. They wanted him to perform visual signs and maybe even to give them more bread. But man cannot live by bread alone. He must also live on the word of God and something more, the Eucharist. Jesus is the bread of life. He wants to nourish our souls and give us the promise of eternal life. This is no mere symbol that he gives us. It is his very flesh for the life of the world. And so Jesus will then explain at length that he is the bread of life to try to move the people from seeing things just in terms of satisfying their bellies to seeking what truly satisfies, which is God himself. Yes, in these days of pandemic, men and women are expressing a spiritual hunger, a desire for the Holy Eucharist. May this desire continue to burn in our hearts so we can be together again for the Mass. In the meantime, we are consoled that the Mass is being offered everywhere for the salvation of the world. May God bless you all.